Hey guys, it's me. It's Queen All Set Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, pass it on to somebody else who might like it too, and drop us a positive comment in the comment section. And if you have time, please stick around because I have two really cool uh, comments from previous videos that I would love to share with you. If you would like to get a reading or if you want to get in contact with me, please feel free to look underneath this video because all my information is there. Now, before I get started, I want to tell you one, two things. Number one, you're going to hear rain in the background. I'm in Costa Rica. We're in the rainy season. And for some reason, it has started to rain again. <laughs> this is the second time today, okay? Um, likewise, I want to tell you that I'm going on vacation next week. I'm going to be gone for the whole week. Um, I'm going to be uploading videos. I, I made like eight videos today. So I'm going to drop maybe like four this week and like four next week or something like that. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. But I'm going to drop them sporadically. I'm going to sprinkle them, you know, so you guys can have a chance to see some of the stuff I'm talking about. Um, so I'm going on vacation and I'll be back. Um, I think I'm, I'm on vacation all next week from Monday until the next Monday. So that means that I'll be recording probably on Monday or Tuesday. So you'll get new videos around that time. So I just wanted to tell you guys, so you wouldn't be like, what's going on with Queen, you know, but, um, I don't know, you know, I didn't go on any vacations. This, this is really, it's a staycation really, but because of the virus that will not be named, none of us could go anywhere. So I didn't go anywhere and I didn't do anything. And I've noticed that I'm really tired. You know, some of the times I wake up in the morning and I'm just like, no. So whenever I start feeling like that, I know I need to rest. Also, I don't know what you, how much you guys know about spiritual paths, but if you're on a spiritual path to be a shaman or a medicine woman or a priestess or a priest or anything along those lines, you go through times of ascension. It's just like um, getting a promotion at work. You know, you go through times when your vibration ascends, it gets higher. You go through a certain amount of time of working on something and it gets higher. So lately, I've been working on my next phase of ascension. And um, I think I need a lot of rest. <laughs> I need a lot of rest before I really dive into it because these can be very intense. And it's a lot of work. There's a lot of books to read. It's a lot of work to do. So I got to learn a new healing method. I got two new decks to read. So it's a lot of work that goes into it. And I think I should sleep and rest for like a week and meditate before I dive into it. I have started already, but um, I have a lot more materials that are coming and a lot more work to do. So I'm gonna go on a little resty rest, okay? And then I'll be back. So I have a very simple question for today. This won't even take long. This person said to me, I'm an Aquarius who went from rags to riches, but I'm still not happy. What is wrong with me? Now, when he said rags to riches, I asked him, what did he mean by that? He told me that as a child, he grew up in a drug house, literally a drug house. Um, his mother um, was prostituting. And this is what he thinks. Of course, it wasn't verified, but he thinks his mother was prostituting and selling drugs. And they were living in this, what we used to call back in the day, a crack house. And it was a house where addicts would go to do drugs in peace, basically, and buy them. A lot of times they would buy them there, they would do them there, and then they would go back to wherever they were going to. Um, a lot of these houses were usually violence. Cops always coming, getting busted. Um, a lot of them don't even have, like, you, they're not even clean. Um, as a young girl, I came across several of these types of establishments and I never went in one that was like nice, <laughs> you know, had nice furniture, you know, they were all kind of, you know, shady, you know, and he grew up in this house, um, basically until he was like, I think he said a teen and then he ended up going to live with an aunt or somebody. Then he got his own place and so forth and so on. So he grew up with nothing basically, um, he said that when he became a teenager, he got his first job and he was telling me how he got his first job. 
and it was like one of those um, youth jobs. In Philadelphia and other big cities, they give the kids these summer jobs and they're just little jobs that they do cleaning up or at a youth center or something like that. And they pay them minimum wage and it's like your first little job. And he said he got his first job and he came home and he had bought a new pair of Jordans. He'd always wanted a pair of Jordans and his mother couldn't afford stuff like that. So his stuff was either hand-me-downs, stolen in some cases, he said, um, stuff like that. And he had bought himself his first brand new pair of Jordans. He spent his whole check on these Jordans. And he told me that um, he went to sleep one night and woke up and somebody stole his Jordans. And he said that um, the devastating part about it was he could never prove it, but he was told that his mother stole and sold his Jordans for drugs. So um, I think the mother, he said his mother was selling them and using them and prostituting and a little bit of everything. So this is the kind of environment he grew up in and has a lot of heartbreaking stories of things that went wrong. So... He told me that um, he got kicked out or left, a combination of both. He went to go stay with another relative. Um, he ended up, you know, uh, getting into some kind of a youth program and graduating with his GED. And after he got his GED, he did some other program and went to some kind of like college program. Come to find out he was smart, <laughs> thank God. And uh, he went to some kind of college program and ended up continuing. And now he's an engineer, like an engineer who builds buildings engineer. And he told me, you know, he's making amazing money. He has a beautiful home. You know, he has several cars. He goes on vacations. He has a, a four by four or something like that. And he told me he has all kinds of material things that he always wanted. Those Jordans, <laughs> several pairs now. And he said that even though he has worked hard and accomplished all these things, that he still finds himself depressed. He says sometimes he finds himself depressed. Sometimes he said that um, he feels like he's that little boy again, sitting in the corner in the crack house. And he asked me why he's like you know I did all this work I've gotten to this place I'm highly respected nobody even knows about his past and why am I still depressed at times why can I let this go and I told him I said you have to understand something the economic aspect of your life was only one aspect there's emotional going on here there's physical going on here there's spiritual going on here there's still wounds that haven't been healed. He hasn't even forgiven his mother for that Jordan's incident we talked about. And mind you, his mother died. She OD'd a couple years later, but she OD'd. So he still hasn't forgiven her. And I said to him, becoming successful was only the first step. That's a, a, a very impressive too, to go through such a story and to become you know, this engineer. But I told him, you also have to heal the wounds on your heart. So I encouraged him to go to get a good therapist. I always encourage people to get a good therapist because if you get a good therapist, it helps so much. So I encouraged him to get a good therapist. Uh, I encouraged him. I, I told him some self-help books, you know, that I've used myself. And I just encouraged him to do the emotional, spiritual work now. You got the money now. Now it's time for you to do some yoga. It's time for you to do some meditation. It's time for you to do some healing work. It's time for you to talk to somebody, do some journaling. It's time for you to get that out. It's time for you to do some forgiveness work, some forgiveness meditations and forgiveness exercises. So I think that he thought that once he became famous, or not even famous, once he became successful, because he's not really a famous person, but he's a very successful person. So he thought that once he became successful, it would erase the past, but it won't. It won't erase the hurt. It won't erase the pain. You know, it just takes you to a better place, which is wonderful, but it doesn't erase everything else. 
Another thing that when you're dealing with Aquarius specifically, Aquarius like things. We do. We like money. We like things. I have a million collections. Y'all know that. I love my toys and my cars and my pocketbooks and my jewelry. I love stuff like that. But Aquarius typically like it and we'll spend it. We'll make it. But we're not like a lot of people who are so impressed by it and constantly pursuing it and things like that. We like money, we like luxury, we like nice things, we're not stupid, but we don't really seek it the way that a lot of people do. Um, a lot of Aquarius I know that have money, like I know some Aquarius who are married or they have like an inheritance or something like that. Aquarius that don't have to worry about their financial, you know, needs, don't care about it at all. Like, like some of them are just like, <laughs> you know, like they like, I don't even care about that. We're not a materialistic sign. Aquarius is more of a spiritual sign, more of a mental sign. You know, we like to, to learn things and have experiences and stuff like that. And money does create the environments for these things to happen but it's not the end all and be all for us that's why a person like in his case has made all this money and still isn't happy money will never buy you happiness money is a tool it is a useful tool prosperity is a good thing i never say that it's not but when you think that that alone is going to make you happy, you're wrong. You have to also be healthy in other ways. And spiritually and emotionally and physically do come up. If Imagine if you're a rich person, but you get into an accident and you're paralyzed from the neck down. Well, you got all the money in the world, but you're paralyzed from the neck down. So just that... And it doesn't have to be something I've seen people paralyzed from the neck down do amazing things. But what I'm saying is, is that just having the money isn't enough. The health, emotional, mental, spiritual, physical health is important too. And what it feels like to me is that he's physically healthy, financially, overly healthy, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally still scarred. So... I feel like he needs to work on that. He also said that it's keeping him from having relationships. He talked to me about being non-committal, which is very Aquarius once again. And I asked him, I said, what would happen if you made a commitment? And he told me, I don't know. All of this time, he's never made a commitment to anything or anyone but himself. So... That's something else, another scar from his childhood that money cannot erase. In this case, money can buy you a good therapist. <laughs> money can buy you some spiritual lessons. Money can buy those kind of things. But you still have to do the work to get healthy. You have to use the tools. Money is just the tool to buy the tools. Now you got to use them. So I'm proud of him. I was so happy to hear his story and hopefully in the months to come, he'll have more good news for me about his emotional health. So that's what's going on. But I'm going to tell you, as an Aquarius, finances and materialism is never going to be enough. I don't care how much money you make, it's never going to be enough. Miss W has the first comment. Miss W said, this was such a nice review. Practical Magic is one of my favorite movies. I love the magical ethereal vibes of it. And the story was beautiful. Question though. What do you think about the love spell Sally did? I can't say I wasn't tempted to do one after seeing her try. Um, for those of you who didn't notice, I have some movie reviews. I reviewed a bunch of movies about witches and witchcraft. Um, they're called the witch trials. They're on my channel. And if you want to take a look at them, I reviewed a bunch of different movies, practical magic, the witches of Eastwick. Um, I did the last one I did was, um, Sabrina, the whole series, Sabrina, the witch. So if you want to check those out, you can 
take a look at them. I talked a lot about basically is the movie realistic is basically and I pointed out which parts are and aren't. Now, the love spell that Sally did um, is, is a basic love spell. I mean, it, it's, it's a beautiful spell, but it's a basic love spell. The problem with Sally's spell is that it was extremely specific. She asked for a man with one blue eye and one green eye. Uh, she asked for um, a man whose symbol is the star. Um, she asked for a lot of different things, and it was very specific. When asking for a love and a love a lover and a love spell a love spell is fine but i would never do one that was that specific unless of course i had somebody in mind me personally when it comes to love spells i try to leave them more general if i was going to do a love spell for myself i would ask for qualities that i wanted the person to have versus physical things like instead of asking for one blue eye and one green eye, I would ask for someone who is loyal, someone who is honest, someone who is single, <laughs> really single and not in entanglements. You know, I would ask for those kind of things. I wouldn't ask for specific physical things. And his, uh, I think she said his symbol should be the star. Mm, I might have said something like, you know, someone who is just you know, I would say words like that. And the reason why I said that is because when you're casting a spell, you can be as specific as you want to be with it, but you give it a better chance at becoming by allowing the universe to have some leeway in what you're asking for. So I ask for exactly what I want. If there's something that you want exactly, yeah, I would ask for that. But I wouldn't ask for everything, you know, exactly. Like, what's, what's most important to you? Like, you want somebody that's gainfully employed. Um, I want to be with a woman, specifically a woman. <laughs> so if I wrote a spell, I wouldn't say, bring me someone. I would say, bring me a woman. And then I would give attributes that I wanted her to have. Gainfully employed, honest, you know, that kind of thing. The more open you allow it to be, the easier it is for the universe to give you the, the fruits <laughs> of your spell. So Sally's spell was a beautiful one, but I don't think it was really a realistic one. And the chances that she would have met him in real life are really not that high. Um, but Sally was a very powerful witch, so I do definitely give that to her. But yeah, that's more um, Hollywood than anything else. Cat, the next one comes from Cat. Hello, Cat. Cat says, "I love your energy." Thank you, Cat. Thank you so much. I love your comment. All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So I am going to upload these videos, and I hope that you enjoy them. See you later. Don't forget, I'll be on vacation for a little bit of time. I'm going to tell you right now exactly how much. So you're going to see videos, all eight of these videos. And I'm going to be on vacation until the 17th. So more than likely, I will record on the 17th or the 18th, depending upon what's going on. And then my next group of videos will come out. So you'll have videos again by the 18th or 19th and um, the ones I'm doing right now, I'm going to sprinkle them so they last as long as possible, okay? All right, guys. Thank you for being here. See you later.